Welcome to Gen XYZ Finance and Technology, where we gather valuable information to keep you up to date with what's going on around the world. Now, before we start, be sure to hit that subscribe button to see more of us and hit that bell button too, so you'll be the first to know about our informative tech videos and practical financial tips. Now on to the video. For this video, we're going to be talking about five important things you need to do before buying a house. Now these are things that you need to check off your list before you can even think about shopping for a new place to live. Whether you're a new homeowner or not, we hope this video helps you out. Number one, take time to find a trusted realtor. When you're looking into buying a new home, it's important to take your time to find a realtor that you can trust, who understands you, and has your best interests in mind. It is smart to look for a realtor with a capital R because that means they are a licensed member of the National Association of Realtors and have therefore agreed to follow the association's code of ethics. There are also a number of realtors who have certificates that prove that they've undergone special training in a specific area of real estate. For example, a certified residential specialist certification proves that the holder has done special training in managing residential real estate. An accredited buyer's representative is certified to have completed special training in representing buyers in transactions. In real estate, nothing beats a good referral. Ask friends and family about real estate agents they have had positive dealings with and check them out online. In addition to a good realtor, you'll also want a mortgage broker that is familiar with all the programs available to various types of buyers. Your realtor and your broker work together to create an important team that will work together in putting a good deal in place once you find the perfect house. We'll talk more about mortgage brokers in just a minute. Number 2. Show them the money. The most important element in determining how much of a house you can buy is your income. And not just what you earn, but what you actually show on your tax return. Many of us, especially those who are in business, work hard to keep track of our expenses throughout the year. This allows us to claim them as a write-off against income on our tax return. For example, in a typical middle tax bracket, for every $100 of expenses you can claim, you'll pay $20 less in actual taxes. So let's say you have $10,000 of verifiable expenses from your business. This will shave off about $2,000 in taxes you owe if you earned around $50,000 per year. Now, while it's a great way to pay less income tax, if you claim too much in expenses, it can work against you when you try to buy a house. Here's why. All those expenses lower your taxable income, so even though you may have earned $50,000, after claiming $10,000 in expenses, it's reduced to $40,000 on your tax return. Many business owners have such a mountain of expenses, it's easy to end up reducing taxable income down to zero or even less than zero. This can make it impossible to buy a house and as your lender will want to see a certain amount of income on your tax return to qualify for the size mortgage you need. There are many useful tools online, so search for things like mortgage calculators to find one to show you how much income is usually necessary for a certain size loan. To obtain, for example, a $400,000 mortgage, it may be necessary to show $75,000 in income, and most of the time, you'll need two years of consecutive tax returns at that level. You only get one shot per year to get this right, so if buying a house is on your radar in the next three years, make sure you remember to show as much income as possible. You'll likely have to forget about claiming all the expenses you could in order to show the income you'll need later for a mortgage. This will result in you paying more taxes, possibly thousands of dollars more. Even so, this is money well spent if it ends up with you getting the house you really want. One way to lessen the blow of a huge tax bill is to pay estimated taxes each quarter of the year. If you think you might need to cough up, let's say, $12,000 in taxes, you might send the government $3,000 per quarter so it doesn't hit you all at once. Buying a house is the largest purchase most of us will ever make. It requires careful planning and strategic budgeting, sometimes years in advance. Number 3. Have a good FICO score In case you didn't know, a FICO score is a three-digit number that is based on the information that is shown on your credit reports. Since it depends on a lot of factors like the lender and which type of loan you're interested in applying for, the credit score that you need to reach to be eligible to apply for a home will vary. Based on your FICO score, lenders will be able to tell how likely it is for you to be able to repay a loan. You need a minimum credit score of 620 to be considered for most conventional mortgages. 
But the higher your credit score, the better chances you have at qualifying for a much lower interest rate. What many people don't know is that mortgage lenders use a different credit scoring method than your everyday consumer credit system. You can work for a year fixing up your credit to a robust 710 only to find out your lender sees you as a 685. The only way to avoid this unpleasant surprise is to go beyond what you would consider a good score. Shoot for a score about 30 points higher than your normal range like 750. Additionally, mortgage lenders use a specific version of the FICO score, pulling the scores from all of the three credit bureaus, where they then use your middle score to help them decide if they'll lend to you or not. At this point, you need to be aware of your mortgage score from all three bureaus so you'll know the middle score which your lender will use. You might have a great score of 720 on one bureau only to be brought down to 695 by another. By watching your credit scores online, you can go into the process with a good idea of what they'll see on your reports. The low 700 range is the point where you can be given some of the best available rates. And believe me, you want the lowest possible interest rate. A small difference in the percentage of your home loan rate can be a difference of $50,000 over the life of an average loan. You can watch our video about improving your credit score for more detailed information. Number 4. Planning for Closing Costs Now, this is a complicated one. We will be discussing how you need to calculate and predetermine important fees that might take a bite out of your budget. Before you even look at any of the available house listings in your desired area, you have to figure out how much you can afford. Besides your mortgage payment, which you will be paying monthly, you also have to think about budgeting for private mortgage insurance, property taxes, a homeowner's association, homeowner's insurance, and your down payment. Property taxes can jump higher in popular urban areas like New York City and San Francisco. There is also private mortgage insurance, something you will typically need if the down payment for your house is less than 20% of the overall price. Private mortgage insurance can cost you about a few thousand dollars per year. Furthermore, your mortgage rate heavily depends on your credit score, meaning your best bet for getting the lowest rate is an excellent credit score. When you've budgeted for the house, insurance, fees, and taxes, you should be looking at other costs related to moving. It would be a good time to determine how much money it's going to cost you for you to settle into your new house. There's your down payment, which could be up to 20% of your house's price, all depending on what kind of mortgage you secure. A long list of miscellaneous closing costs will add up to thousands more. Some of these include a credit check fee, title insurance, transfer tax, title search fee, application fee, appraisal fee, underwriting and or origination fees, document preparation, and the real estate's agent's fees, which will likely be in the 3% range. If you're planning to use all the proceeds from the sale of your present home to cover your down payment, remember that you may lose about $30,000 to $50,000 to closing fees at settlement. When you're selling your present house, subtract a reasonable amount you might have to pay in closing fees from your equity. Another thing that requires advanced planning is being able to show where your down payment came from. Lenders don't want to see you taking out loans for a down payment. You have to be able to show them it entered your bank account. It's okay if a family member gives you a gift, as long as some paperwork reflects that later. First-time home buyers can qualify for a special low down payment rate of 1-3%. to Just keep in mind that the more you can put down, the less your monthly payments will be. Putting down 10 or 20% instead of 3% will save you a fortune over the life of the mortgage. Number 5. Work with a mortgage broker the first thing to do when researching options for mortgages is to work with a mortgage broker. Having an experienced broker on your team is just as important as working with a good realtor. Without financing, you won't get the house you want or any house, really. A broker knows all the tricks to get you qualified for the amount you need. Also, since they're working for you, they can impart inside tips to help you look better to lenders. There are many ways to get turned down for a mortgage and you'll want a pro to help you avoid them. Some of the loan types a broker can recommend include FHA, VA, and USDA. They will vary according to your income, your credit score, down payment, and status as a first-time buyer. Other things such as whether you've been in the military or work in education can also open up lending opportunities. FHA Loans An FHA loan is typically regarded as a good choice for first-time homebuyers. If your FICO score is at least 580, you are eligible for an FHA loan with a 3.5% down payment. Typically, FHA loans require a debt-to-income ratio of less than 
USDA loans. Directed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this loan caters to homeowners with low to moderate incomes who want to live in largely rural areas. If you're going to be a first-time homeowner and don't meet the requirements of a regular mortgage, you'll want to look at a USDA loan because they don't require a down payment and can have a moderate requirement for a credit score. However, there are some guidelines you may have to look through since this loan has a specific idea of where the property should be located while also being pretty strict about income limits. Annual income limits for a household with four members in most counties ranges from $90,000 to $350, and a five to eight person household can have an income limit of up to $119,200. As previously mentioned, this loan observes where your property will be located, meaning if you're looking at a higher cost area, for example, the county of San Francisco, the limit for small households is $212,500 and $280,550 for large households. In the end, it's important to do your research so that you know which mortgage options will cater to you. Your broker will then decide to be able to consider the best lender for your needs. You may get intimidated by dealing with lenders and having to jump through hoops for a loan, but you have a higher chance of being accepted with a great credit score and flexibility with your down payment. Remember that lenders don't base their decision making on whether you're a nice person, have a baby, or really want the house. You need to give them what they want in order to get what you want. Make it easy for them to approve your loan by preparing three years ahead of time to boost your credit score and file attractive tax returns. You'll have to show some discipline in your spending habits too. During the three years before you buy a house, try to limit major credit card purchases and new accounts. If possible, pay down your car loan and credit cards. Don't open new charge accounts or lines of credit. Put aside money in case you have to pay higher taxes when you show higher income on your returns. And that's all for this video. Do you have any home buying tips? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that notification bell too to also stay updated and be notified whenever we post new videos. Thank you for watching.